Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Pastor Lance Smith and we're here with the Zwingli Hump Day Midweek Devotional. Today we're up at New Glarus and I want to talk to you about these things like this. These shields, these crests, these are called wapens. When I first came to New Glarus area, first came to Greene County, I noticed these everywhere, especially in New Glarus. New Glarus and Monroe, they're just covered up. Anything that's Swiss has these shields or canton, they're, they're wapens, and it denotes the canton or the state of Switzerland, right? Because there were a lot of Swiss immigrants that moved to this area. It was populated by the Swiss. And we're up in New Glarus today to see if we can find this guy here because I found out he's the only one of the crests that has a person on it. And so I asked somebody, who's that guy on that crest? And they said, well, that's Fridolin. And I got obsessed with the name Fridolin after that, and I started seeing it everywhere. I saw it on tombstones, I saw it on monuments, I saw it on markers. I saw this guy on almost every shield in New Glarus. And so today we're gonna find Fridolin. I kept searching for this guy named Fridolin and his name kept popping up all over New Glarus and all over, all over Greene County. And so the first thing I did when I tried to find more about him, I thought, well, first of all, that name Fridolin's kind of an odd name. Where did Fridolin come from? And the pictures, a lot of the Wappens kind of look like, you know, like somebody of Celtic descent. It looks like an Irishman. So what's this Irishman doing on the, on the Glarus Canton? The, the flag of the state of Glarus, Switzerland. And so I wondered. So I Googled it, you know, and the first thing that came up when I Googled it was this yellow automobile. Isn't that interesting? It seems like the Fridolin, much to my surprise, was the name of a VW delivery wagon that was sold primarily to the Swiss post office. Fridolin. I sort of became obsessed with this guy. I just... I had to know more about him, and I had to understand why there were generations of people here that were named Fridolin, and why it happened in the 1800s and 1900, early 1900s, why all the tombstones were of that era that had the name Fridolin on them. So I googled that name and I got a lot of interesting facts. I got some facts about some legends about this guy, this saint, this guy named Fridolin. I stopped by the Swiss Center of North America where I met a wonderfully helpful person named Beth Zerbachen. She gave me a little background on, on the Swiss Center and then opened the world of Fridolin to me. Some, some very old manuscripts that helped, and with the help of Google Translate, I was able to get a good understanding of St. Fridolin and the legends that surround him. Hmm, I guess we'll start from where, where he was from. You see, Fridolin came from medieval times. That's when he was active on the earth. And, and uh, med medieval times saw the spread of Christianity throughout Europe. And the spreading of that faith came through the actions of missionaries like Fridolin. And most missionaries came from, guess where? Ireland. Several options of the legend, there's a lot of them to choose from. Some say he was a Scottish, the son of a Scottish royal. Some say the son of an affluent Irishman. But at any rate, his, his mission led him to the heart of Western Europe. You know, near southern Germany and Austria and Switzerland. That's where, the, where they would be today. They were all still pagan or non-Christian. Fridolin was a student, or at least a follower, of the teachings of St. Hilary, or some would call him St. Hilarius. Legend has it that while Fridolin was in Potiers, France, on his mission journey, St. Hilarius came to him in a vision, asking him to build a monastery on an island near the headwaters of the Rhine, in the country known as the Alamand. So Fridolin follows the call and heads to the Alamand, or as the French word meaning, which is the French word meaning German. He travels the countryside gathering converts to the faith and then one day he, he sees this island that was in his vision. He goes wandering looking all over the island, the place where local farmers graze cattle. Thinking the worst of this strange looking fellow, 
The farmers think he's come to steal their cattle. So they bring him to town in his court, and he's brought before the community court. After he proved his innocence, Fridolin bears down on the region surrounding the Dream Island. He converts the landowner of the island named Urso, and Urso is taken with the presence, so taken with the presence of this Celtic monk that he leaves the property to him in his will. Fridolin fights to secure the property, but is contested in court. Being foreign, his voice is not heard very well, and, and Urso's brother, Landolf, is a local. And he's just not having any of this will. So one day Fridolin shows up in court with a resurrected Urso as a witness to the validity of the will. Landolf, Urso's brother, is, shall we say, so impressed that he not only gives the contested property to Fridolin, he also gives half of his own property and converts to Christianity. I assume Urso's return to his tomb and a monastery and a convent are soon erected on the island at Fridolin, and Fridolin would so move the people of Glarus that they would put his image on their state crest and declare him the patron saint of Glarus. After I read a few passages in those books that Beth had for me and took a few pictures, I decided she told me about this monument down here. Right down here, we're right in the center of town. Uh, we're at 69 and 39. She told me about this. This is Fridlin's staff. I've been by here about a hundred times and never really realized what it was until she told me it was Fridlin's staff. Now, I'm not sure how accurate those legends are about Fridlin. You know, all those things that's depicted in, in, in art and sculpture and Fridlin walking along with a corpse. Hmm. I'm also thinking as a pastor that maybe our job as pastors, priests, as people of the gospel, as missionaries, that we're trying to discern the truth, trying to figure out what's true, even if we have to use the testimony of someone who's been resurrected. You know, the testimony of the empty tomb for Christians saying that, you know, nothing can stop truth and light, not even death. May you see the presence of the Creator in every glance you take, and may you feel His presence walking with you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.